Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and I have a super exciting announcement today and the basis of today's video obviously. The Colour Cave has become the official UK stockist of Julia K Art Studio handmade watercolour paints. So what this means for you guys is that if you are in the UK or slightly further afield, you are able to take advantage of getting a hold of Julia's paints without having to pay the astronomical EU charges for postage and also a shorter time uh, for actual delivery as well. The prices will be the same in the stash shop as they are on Julia's store. So we are running in tandem. This is very much a partnership. It's not a competition because obviously... I'm getting the paint from Julia. So here in the stash shop, we're gonna start with a small selection of Julia's colors and the two most recent colors that she's released. And over time, we're gonna build that up gradually until we've got a full inventory that matches what is on Julia's Etsy store. If you are in the EU or even slightly further afield, you can obviously go to Julia's Etsy store as normal and just buy the paints. The link to her Etsy store is down in the description if you want to head over there and check those out. So we've carefully curated the selection that we've got to start with and what I would like to do in this video is just show you them and show you them in action as well so you can get a good feel for them. If you have joined our membership and you are a top tier member please keep an eye on your emails because you'll be getting a newsletter shortly uh, that's going to give you a special perk for Julia's paints as well. One of the joys of being a top tier caver, champion caver. I am super excited about this and Julia and I have been planning this for a long time. There seems to have been quite a lot of demand for paints here in the UK but some people just can't really justify it once you dump the cost of the postage on top of buying a couple of pans of paint. So I'm hoping that this will scratch an itch for some of you. For those of you that have been hanging about the cave for a long time uh, you'll know I've been using Julia's paints for a while and uh, I'm a firm advocate of not only her base colours but her more creative collections as well because um, they're just really good fun so let's get to top down view and try out these paints I am so glad this day has finally come because I thought I was going to internally combust keeping this information to myself for the last oh goodness knows how long so what we've done is we've created a base selection of colours to start us off in the stash shop so we uh, we've tried to pick a balance set and to be honest it's really difficult because all of Julia's colours are so pretty um, but if I take a wee zoom in here, this is the uh, the base set of colours that are available on the stash shop right now. And I've tried to pick a balance of flat colours that can be used in conjunction with watercolours that you already have. Um, Julia's paints behave really well with others and like, the paints like to play with others. So we've got a selection of the flat colours here that I felt would be useful um, for mixing that kind of thing. Obviously, Svea, Cedric and Harry are a, a good selection of colours to have because you can mix most things from then. But also, I wanted a, a selection of the Spangly colours as well, plus Skelly Grow, just because it's nice to have a white watercolour um, for mixing purposes. So these are available from the get-go. We will be adding more of Julia's colours in the coming months a couple of times, so there will be a fresh selection available on the stash shop every month and we will slowly build up our library to match that of Julia Kay's own store on Etsy. So this is a good starting point. In addition to these 12 colours that are available now, we also have Julia's two newest colours which is she has just recently introduced in her shop and that is Ulf and Doris or if you're Swedish it's Doris. I haven't tried these colours yet. <laughs> so we, uh, I'm going to show you the swatches of all of uh, the base colours we're just going to call them but we are going to swatch these out together um, because uh, this is exciting. We'll see what time we've got and we'll maybe do a little bit of art with them. Okay so here are the base set of paints swatched out and I've swatched them over the top of some black paint here so you can see how some of them react. They're not completely dry yet um, but I just wanted to give you an indication. So out of our flat colours here um, you can see that these perform quite well so we do have a red, blue and a green. Ula is like um, it's like a dark indigo colour here, which obviously was favoured by me. And uh, I particularly like Stig as a brown because it mixes well with other colours. And we've got Darcy as a kind of greyish brown colour too. Um, so nice sort of earthy selection there also. 
Then we come down to the slightly more exciting stuff, and you can see this is quite exciting. So Pat Gould is primarily just gold pigment. There is a tiny little bit of colour behind it, but not much. So it means you can use it over the top of things or mix it with other paints that you already have to put a gold shimmer in it. Um, Ouda is one of my personal favourites and has been from the start, and it's just a lovely delicate grey that's got a little bit of shimmer in it. And uh, then we come to the three hooligans of the pack, uh, which I wanted to include that sort of fun element to really show off Julia's creativity as well. Uh, Merida is a fairly new colour to me, so you can see that that has a dark teal base and it has a, a really nice sort of emerald shimmer as well, which shows up amazingly on black paper. This will be better once it's completely dry, it's still a little bit damp. Then we've got Spira, which is one of the very first colours I ever got from Julia. So this is a green pigment with gold in it as well. Um, really nice for um, if you're doing trees that have got sunlight bouncing off them, really handy for that. And um, <laughs> then there's Mimar. There's a story behind Mimar, and the story goes that this was an accident and it just turned out to be a really fun colour. So there is a sort of reddish brown base to that. And Julia added the wrong shimmer pigment and came out with this and realised it actually looked quite cool um, because there's a lot of contrast between the, the brown of the background and the shimmer colour. So she decided just to make it a thing. And lastly, we've got Skelly Grow, and uh, this is a, a pure white and it's actually quite opaque. And um, this is nice to mix with colours to give you pastel colours. Also to give a milky foggy appearance, appearance if you don't want to use traditional watercolour methods you can put a watered down layer of this over the top and it will give you that give you that sort of misty milky film to it. So yeah I thought that was a, a really nice fun selection to start with. Um, so if you're looking to buy some really good quality paints to get you started I can strongly suggest these ones up here or if you're looking to spice up your watercolour collection you have these ones down here. I would particularly recommend Cat Gould because it mixes well um, as well as the Skelly Grow. It mixes well with any existing watercolour paints you might have. I say because these are handmade they're of the highest quality and and uh, that is ensured that they play well with others. So now we've got the next exciting bit, and that is the, to unearth Doris and Ulf. I'll zoom out just a tiny little bit. Autofocus is getting confused here. Doris, a lot of Julia's colours are named after people or uh, are animals as well. And I have had the pleasure of meeting Doris which is not one of Julia's dogs, but just happened to be in the vicinity when I was visiting. And uh, she is adorable. Like, she's such a good girl. Um, and she is a, a, a griffin, a petty griffin basset, or a petty basset griffin. I can't remember quite which way around. So with the half pans and the full pans as well, um, Julia used to have foil on these and they were pretty fiddly. So she's decided just to stick with the paper and it's got a little um, resistant part under there um, to stop the paint sticking to the paper. You know, it's like grease proof paper. But on the side of the all of the pans as well, they are named, they have a label on them. Um, so if you end up with some that are quite similar or you end up with a lot of her paints like me, you can still tell them apart because they do look quite different in the pan to what they look like on the paper. Um, as I'm probably about to demonstrate with Doris, I would imagine. Um, so there, there is uh, Julia's swatch on the front of the actual pan and she does these by hand. This isn't printed, this is actual paint that she has done with a paintbrush. So very, very much handmade and that's one of the, the joys of her paints and one of the reasons I love them because she does take the time and make them with love. I did have a go at making some paint when I was in Sweden. Julia makes it look really easy. It is not easy at all. Um, and I was terrified about spilling things everywhere because of my weird hand. But I had really good fun. Um, but I, I will definitely be leaving the paint making to the professionals. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So you can see there that Ulf and Doris, they're actually not that far apart when you see them in the pans. But when you add water to them, that's when things get a bit funky. So <laughs> let's see how this goes. I'm excited. I love doing this. So uh, I've probably fit them both in there, but I think I'm going to put Ulf up here. So one of the things I always suggest with Julia's pans, particularly if they're really shimmery, is uh, to let a little bit of water sit in them for a wee while, because that helps activate the shimmer pigment and make it mobile and gives you a better opportunity to mix it in with the rest of the paint. There's two ways that you can do this. You can either take a, a paintbrush that holds a lot of water. So I've got this Jackson's Quill brush here. That's pretty good for that. And you can kind of dollop a bit of water in and let it sit for a wee second. 
or if you've got one of the little spritzer sprays i've got this little derwent number here i've had this a long time now it's getting a bit worn anything I mean, you can buy really cheap ones of these in a pound shop and stuff um you can spray your palette with that um if you're going to do a lot of painting so i can just squish goose but i'll do it for me and again just let that sit for a wee minute okay so let's get down to this so this is Ulf see this is new to me I have never swatched these out I have only seen what you have seen so let's see what happens oh that is rich that is rich so that's like grey and brown together oh my I might actually have to take a little bit of that off see if I can yeah look so can you see the, the, the blue undercurrent there and the brown on the top <sighs> this is amazing yeah, let me just suck some of this paint up. What an interesting paint. Look. So I'm wondering how much of that brown will actually dry brown on this right hand side here. Let's pull it across a little bit. Okay. Oh, that was interesting. It looks really good grey here. <laughs> Doesn't look grey at all on here. Okay. This paint's got a mind of its own. And let's try Doris, which is clearly a very pretty colour. Which I'm quite excited, oh, quite excited about. Doris. Oh yeah. Oh look, it's so lovely. Isn't she lovely? Just like Doris herself. That is a really pretty colour. Okay. Well then, if you were looking for a bright colour, you got it. If you're looking for a mystery colour or a colour that's got a mind of its own, you've got it. Okay, so there we go. That is your full set of 14 colours of Julia Kay's paints that are now available in the stash shop. Now, I'm trying to, like, I'm just kind of like all the colours at this point. That <laughs> I was kind of thinking about doing a wee sketch and actually using these maybe just on this side here. And this is an Arteza sketchbook, so don't expect much. And it's the paper that's the problem, not the paints. I would just like to point that out. But I am keen to use this up and, and never see another Arteza sketchbook again. Uh, but we'll talk about that another time. But I kind of feel like um, in Merida should be like a little bit of like a body of water down here. Um, and maybe we could use a, a combination of sphere and Ulu. Ulu for a sky. Let's bring that water. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and maybe this can be the horizon line here or something. As I say, this is just really to so that you can see the paints behaving and you know how they sort of dot about. Now the problem is that my actual swatches, uh, my actual pans of these paints are all over the place. Uh, they're not in a nice little. Uh, neat line or a neat bundle like this uh, these are the ones that are actually in the shop um mine are already embedded in several tins so i'll zoom out and i'll show you my julia k tins just now um there are pans that still haven't been added so here is my shimmer tin which is filling up quite quickly and uh, i've also got a tin of just the flat colors too which looks a little bit like this um, these ones haven't got a home yet um, and there's more in this tin as well that haven't got a home yet and uh, yeah so uh, yeah Julia, Julia does not enable me at all honestly guys let me find Merida first Merida her paint is so rich I'm splooshing stuff everywhere There we go. Beautiful. So I find as well that with these, sh with any shimmer paints, not just Julia's, it takes a little while for the actual shimmer to show through. Like you need a little bit of drying time before it really starts to show through. So don't panic if it's wet and you're not seeing anything shiny. It, it will happen, I promise. It will happen. So again, we could we could use the likes of Stig here as a, just a base ground colour. A little bit of stig on this side. Um, keep it really light, and again, you can layer up anything else or mix with any current watercolor you have. That should go quite well for you in this instance. So 
see the behaviour you're seeing here with the uh, the paint is actually the paper, it's not the paint, um, it not wanting to move. Um, but we still do a good job here. And I'm just going to let that bleed into the, the Merida a little bit there. Not that it'll bleed properly, but again, paper, not paint. But also, uh, these colours build really well. I mean, they're like they're jam packed with pigment. They really are. Um, I mean, look, and you can keep building that up and building that up. Really, really rich pigment. So there is no there is no skimping, zero skimping. Um, also as well, Julia makes these um with. Swedish honey and she tries to source that honey locally and she stays in a fairly rural area um, and you know people have things like apiaries so she is conscious of keeping her own economy afloat. Okay so like let's take Svea for example now. Just take that down to the Water this is very, very like a, like an ultramarine type colour. Um and we can maybe mix that in with a little bit of the Ula Ula <laughs> Oh Swedish uh, which is the dark blue. See? Oh yeah, and even on crappy paper, mixing together beautifully. Love it. Uh, I have this weird mark that keeps appearing in this sketchbook as well. It must be a flaw in the paper. <laughs> I was so confused the first time I saw it. Um, uh, even if you're not interested in buying Julia's paint, this is a lesson in what uh, watercolour sketchbook not to buy. <laughs> God. But there you go, you can see um, the colours are blending in together beautifully, which is what you would expect from a watercolour. I mean, if the paint didn't do this, it would be questionable, and I would also not be stocking it in my shop. But... But, 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 we still have the ability to lift as well. I did it over there a little bit with the Ulf. Um, but you can you can take this away with a thirsty brush technique. Um, this brush is particularly absorbent. Um, unsurprisingly, it was Julia that put me onto this brush as well. Um, but yeah, you can lift colour the same way as you would with any other watercolour. And, uh, you know, you can give it a bit of texture or whatever. So, yeah, um, <laughs> that's just a really quick demonstration. Obviously, I just, I just wanted to show you them in action, give you a really good feel for them. And uh, it says, zoom in a little bit there. We have we do have colours that have a lot of granulation. Some of Julia's colours are granulating colours as well. We've got so much scope and variety here. And it's the, one of the reasons that I absolutely love our paint. I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting here, my wee brain's going. And this is what happens, isn't it, when I start talking? But I kind of want to grab a wee tiny bit of skelly grow and uh, put this in so you can see the shimmer in the water starting to appear now that's the merida down here down the bottom um but i can grab the skelly grow and keep it fairly dry and uh, you know you, you're almost getting like a kind of gouache feel with that if you keep it as dry as possible get a little bit of sea foam on the go and obviously it will dry and it and it will mute down as it dries it is watercolor paint it's not gouache but it's really nice if you want like a subtle little effect in there. So I'll follow the line of some of that paint. And there you go, that gives you some added texture, some added interest as well, and you're still using these watercolours. The Skelly Grow is really, really versatile. I was surprised, I was like, what am I going to do with a white watercolour? The answer is stuff like this. <laughs> and then if you're feeling really fancy, we could maybe stick uh, some Cedric in here if you wanted some sunlight. Um, Let's water this right down. I've got I've got a ceramic palette just off to the left here. Um so I'm just going to really, really um water down some Cedric, which is that uh, yellow colour. Um and while that's still wet, you could pop a little bit of that in there. And then take a clean, slightly wet brush, and then you could take a rag and do a little bit of the, the thirsty brush technique, but with a rag. So you've got actually got a light source in there. But look how delicate I can make that. But you can tell there's de there's a definite, you know, there's definitely colour there. So Julia's paints are really versatile. I love them. Obviously, I wouldn't... I, I said this in a live stream, um, in the live stream on Wednesday. I would not sell products in my shop that I don't stand behind 100%. And uh, I have been using Julia's paints for about three and a half years now. 
and I absolutely love them. I love the excitement of the creativity of her colours, but I also like the practicality and the range that she has. And I also like the versatility of them as well. Can I just add in a little bit more with the stig here? The stig, the stig, oh, that was way too much water. The stig. Now that that's dried off a bit. And again, maybe pop a little bit of Cedric in there as well. Why not? Just let that do its thing too. All good. So let's take a look at this Ulf colour again because this is just, this is just absolutely crazy. <laughs> it really is. I zoom right in on it now. Um, so you can see it there next to Darcy. We've got this amazing blue, but this really deep reddish brown colour up here as well. It's absolutely mental. Um, I really like that. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. but <laughs> And then if we take a look at Doris down the bottom, we've got this beautiful fuchsia pinky purple colour. And I was saying to Julia um, when I went to visit her that I don't know what it is, but just recently I seem to have a thing for like fuchsia and magenta colours. So this really tickled my fancy. It really, really did. So uh, I think uh, just generally this wee set's done me a favour. Um, I would love to know what you think about these new colours specifically that Julia has just brought out. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you make of Ulf? Because it's it's quite a unique colour. It's kind of in the same league as Mimer down here. Um, and also, what do you think of the selection that we now have to buy in the stash shop? Are these colours that you like? Are there any colours in particular that you would like to see in the stash shop? As I said, we will be introducing more and more as we go along. So if you do have a particular favourite that you've been hankering after, and maybe the postage from Sweden isn't too great, um, it's very, very expensive uh, to get stuff here to the UK now from Sweden just because we're not in the EU. I am open to all feedback if you are fancying some of Julia's paints and you can't see what it is you are after. Obviously, if you're in mainland Europe, if you're in the EU, you can pick up all of these colours and way, way more of Julia's stuff and you can go to her Etsy store. The link to her Etsy store is down in the description. The prices are very similar at bar the exchange rate and we will be keeping them priced the same. Obviously, it's not competitive. We just like to think of the cave as an extension of Julia's shop so that people in the UK can enjoy her paints as much as everywhere else. So you'll find all the links down underneath the video here. Guys, I want to thank you very much for watching today. Thanks for coming and hanging out. I am so happy that this has happened. Like, this makes me so happy. Look at this. Look, how can you not love this? And uh, I will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video. So have a great day, everyone, and bye-bye for now.